Hello, and welcome to the Curious Kid Cast. I'm your host, Andy, and boy, oh boy, do I have a mystery for you today. You know, a few weeks ago, I got the most brilliant question from a kid named Marcus. He's from Austin, Texas. And here's the thing Marcus had a really, really good reason for asking this question. You see, Marcus's baby sister just started to smile and recognize his face. And Marcus wondered if she would actually remember this time when she grew up. That's actually really sweet, right? So Marcus asked me this burning question, and I thought it was so good that we had to make a whole episode about it. The question was, why can't we remember being babies? And let me tell you, when Marcus asked me that, my brain did something funny. It went, wait, where are all my baby memories? And then I realized, I don't have any. It's like someone went into my brain with a giant eraser and just went to town. So I decided to investigate like a brain detective. I put on a tiny detective hat. I got a magnifying glass. I started looking around in my own head, and what I found is absolutely wild. Stick around, and we're going to figure this mystery out together. All right, so first question, what even is a memory? Imagine your brain is the biggest library in the entire world. We're talking bigger than any library you've ever seen. It's absolutely massive. Picture the biggest building you can think of, and then make it like 10 times bigger. And this library is full of shelves, books, journals, maps, secret tunnels, everything. It's got everything. Every single day you live, your brain is writing new books for this library. A book about the day you lost your first tooth. A book about the time your friend made you laugh so hard you actually snorted. A book about your trip to the zoo where you saw that hilarious monkey making faces at you. And yes, a book about the embarrassing time you slipped on the kitchen floor and landed flat on your bottom. That one gets a whole book. But here's where it gets interesting. Your brain doesn't store memories like a computer saves files on a hard drive. Instead, it builds these tiny bridges called connections between brain cells. And when you remember something, your brain actually recreates the pattern of those connections. It's like rewinding a film, except the film is made of electricity and tiny brain bits. Basically, your brain is a movie theater and you're constantly watching reruns of your own life. But, but, wait. Because here comes the twist and this is where things get weird. When you were a baby, your brain library wasn't even close to being ready. The shelves were all wobbly, like someone glued them together after drinking way too much juice. The lights were flickering on and off like a disco party gone wrong. The librarians were nowhere to be found. And honestly, half the building was still being painted pink. There were paint cans everywhere. Your baby brain was growing so incredibly fast that memories just couldn't stick properly. It's like trying to glue stickers onto a bouncy ball. They just don't stick. And that's where our mystery really begins. Okay, let's talk about the baby brain. Because this is where things get absolutely bonkers. When you were born, and I mean the very second you arrived into the world, your brain was already doing some pretty amazing stuff. Here are some wild facts that might blow your mind. At birth, your brain had around 100 billion neurons. That's the same number an adult has. 100 billion. That's more than there are people on Earth. Seriously, if every person on Earth had their own personal brain cell, we'd still run out of people before we ran out of brain cells. But babies have way fewer connections between those neurons. The connections were way less developed. It's like having a hundred billion guests at a party, but nobody's talking to each other. They're just standing around in awkward silence. But then something insane happens. The moment you're born, your brain starts making new connections at speeds that would make a rocket jealous. A rocket in space going super fast. Your baby brain was going faster than that. It was like your brain was on fast forward. Get this, by the time you were two years old, your brain had more connections than it would ever have again in your entire whole life. By age three, 
your brain had double the number of connections an adult has right now. Double. You were basically a tiny genius in a nappy. That sounds good, right? More connections must mean more memories sticking around, surely. Logically. But nope, not quite. The baby brain is doing so much learning all at the same time that it barely has time to organize anything properly. It's like trying to pack your entire bedroom into a backpack while you're also riding a skateboard and eating a, a sandwich and texting your mate and doing your homework. Chaotic doesn't even begin to cover it. Your baby brain was trying to figure out how to move arms without smacking itself in the face, how to crawl without face planting into the carpet every three seconds, how to balance without falling over constantly, how to recognize familiar faces, how to tell the difference between a cat meowing and a dog barking, how to hold on to food instead of dropping it on the floor. Because let's be honest, babies are absolutely terrible at keeping food in their hands. It goes everywhere, spaghetti on the ceiling, yogurt in the hair, carrots under the sofa, it's bananas, literally bananas everywhere. Your baby brain was also learning how to understand words, how to make sounds, how to figure out who to trust, how to literally stay alive, which is kind of important, and how to generally stop eating things that aren't actually food. Because babies put everything in their mouths, sticks, dirt, socks, dog food, leaves, it's absolutely wild what babies will eat. If it looks remotely edible, into the mouth it goes. Your brain during those early years was like a really, really busy building site. There are builders rushing around everywhere, walls being put up, wires being connected, scaffolding covering absolutely everything. There's noise, there's dust, there's people shouting instructions, and everything is changing every single second. There's simply no space for proper long-term memory storage when all that chaos is happening. Your brain is basically going, look, I don't have time to file away memories. I'm too busy trying to stop you from eating the sofa. Now here's a weird bit, and I want you to pay attention to this because it's going to blow your mind a little bit. Babies can actually remember things. They totally can. I know, I know, plot twist, but not in the way you might think. There are two main types of memories, and understanding the difference is like having the secret key to unlock this whole mystery. Type 1 is implicit memories. These are body memories. They're things you can actually do, but you don't really think about them. They just happen automatically. Like, how did you learn how to suck? You were born knowing that. It's like an app that comes pre-installed on your brain. How did you learn how to grab things? You figured it out without a manual. How did you learn to recognize your parents' voice without anyone giving you a training course? You just knew. How did you learn to smile back at people who smiled at you? You worked it out on your own. These memories don't use words and they don't get stored like stories. They're more like built-in habits or automatic skills, like how you know how to walk without thinking about each individual step or how you know how to ride a bike and suddenly you just do it. Type 2 is explicit memories. These are story-style memories, the kind you can explain and talk about and bore your friends with. Like, I remember my birthday party, or I remember going to the playground, or I remember dropping my ice cream and crying for approximately 17 hours. That kind of thing. And here's the secret that scientists discovered. And this is the big one. Explicit memories require a very special part of the brain called the hippocampus. Think of the hippocampus as the memory librarian. It's the part that organizes all your stories and keeps them safe on those library shelves we talked about. It's like the head librarian who knows exactly where everything is. And guess what the hippocampus is doing when you're a baby. It's still growing. It's there, definitely, showing up to work, trying its best, but it's not quite ready to do its job properly yet. It's like having a librarian who's still learning how to do the job, they're enthusiastic, but they drop things, they forget where books go, they accidentally alphabetize things by color instead of by title. Rookie mistakes. So the memories babies make don't actually get saved in the long-term library. They're more like scribbles, drawn on a chalkboard that get wiped completely clean every single night. Gone. Vanished. Poof. Like they were never there at all. You did have memories as a baby. That's a fact. But they were just temporary. Here today... Gone tomorrow, like a memory ice lolly that melts in the sun. Okay, I have a really fun question for you now, and I want you to imagine this with me, because this is where it gets hilarious. What if you could actually remember being a baby? What if all those memories stuck around and didn't disappear? What if your brain was like a video recorder that never stopped recording? 
Oh my goodness, this would be absolute chaos. Total madness. I'm talking total breakdown of society as we know it. Scenario 1. Your first words would be absolutely ridiculous and your parents would be mortified. Most babies say, mama or dada. Those are the usual first words you hear about. Everyone coos over them. They take a million photos. But if babies could actually remember everything, their first sentences would be things like, why did you feed me mushy peas? Seriously, why would you do that to me? That's not food, that's texture. That's a crime. Scenario two, toddlers would tell the most embarrassing stories ever and no parent wants that. Imagine you're in school one day and your teacher asks the class, what's your earliest memory? And you raise your hand and say, my dad made these really weird singing sounds while changing my nappy. Like really bad singing. And then he dropped the wipes everywhere. Wipes on the floor, on the furniture, everywhere. And then he sneezed really loudly and jumped like a scared cat, like full panic mode. And your dad is sitting in the back of the classroom looking like total embarrassment. His face is going bright red. He's trying to disappear into his chair. He's hoping the ground will open up and swallow him whole. Scenario three, babies would judge absolutely everyone constantly, and they'd remember every detail. Babies see everything. They watch people constantly. They're like tiny surveillance cameras in onesies. So if they could remember, they'd remember. Who made silly faces at them. Who talked like a squeaky duck. Who dropped something on their head. Who tried to make them wear ridiculous outfits. The awful hats. The weird pattern jumpers. Everything. And then later, at age six, they'd confront you out of nowhere and say, why did you put me in that knitted pineapple outfit? Explain yourself immediately. I was a baby. I couldn't fight back. That was cruel. All right, we've had our fun with the silly scenarios. Now let's get back to the real science because honestly, the real explanation is just as fascinating, if not more so. Here's the part that scientists find most interesting. Your brain during the first few years of your life is constantly rewriting itself. And I mean constantly, every single day, every single second. Because your brain is changing so incredibly quickly, memories can't settle or stick. They just get buried, rewritten, or lost completely. They don't have time to take root. Here's a simple way to understand it. Imagine you're writing a story in the sand on a beach, but here's the thing. The waves keep washing up every single minute, and every time they do, your story completely disappears. You have to start over, again and again. That's baby memory. You're writing in the sand, but the ocean won't stop messing with you. Now here's an interesting question. Do any humans actually remember their early babyhood? A few rare people say they remember things from when they were two years old. Some of them claim they remember being in a cot. Others say they remember hearing a favorite lullaby. But here's the thing. Even those memories fade over time. They disappear. Scientists actually tested thousands of children and found something really surprising. Children age three can remember things very clearly. But by the time they're seven years old, half of those memories have completely disappeared. Poof, gone. And by age 10, Almost all memories from age three have totally vanished. This means your brain doesn't just forget. It actually replaces your early memories as it reorganizes itself. It's like your brain is constantly upgrading its filing system. Out with the old, in with the new. I have a quick interesting fact for you. Not all animals remember the way we do. Elephants. Baby elephants can remember migration routes that take weeks to travel. They remember dangers. They remember family members for their entire lives. They're basically carrying a giant encyclopedia in their heads. Dolphins have such amazing memories that they can remember the whistles of other dolphins for more than 20 years. Some birds can remember specific sounds they heard when they were still inside their eggs. Inside the egg. Before they were even born. Before they had a body. Before they had ears. And they still remember. Dogs remember emotions and smells way more strongly than events. A dog will remember the smell of your house for years. They could leave and come back 20 years later and go, Oh yeah, I remember this place. That's Karen's house. But humans, we have the most powerful memory systems later in life. We're just not built for remembering the very beginning. We're built to forget. All right, before we finish up today, I have a special quiz for you. Three fun questions about what we learned. Are you ready?
Quiz question one. What is the special part of the brain that acts like a memory librarian and helps store your story style memories? The answer is the hippocampus. That's the memory librarian of your brain, the one in charge of filing everything away. Question two. How many neurons does a baby have when it's born? The answer is about 100 billion neurons. That's the same number as an adult. Your baby brain was already fully stocked with brain cells. It just didn't know how to use them yet. Question three. What are the two types of memories we talked about today? The answer is implicit memories, which are body memories and habits, like knowing how to smile, and explicit memories, which are story-style memories you can actually explain, like that time you fell off your bike. So, there you have it. The mystery of why we can't remember being babies is solved. Case closed. Even though you can't remember those early years, they still shaped you in ways that matter. They taught you to trust the people around you. They taught you to move and explore the world. They taught you to love. They taught you how the world works. And most importantly, they helped build the brilliant brain you have right now. You don't remember your baby days, but they helped create who you are. And that is a pretty magical thought. Thank you so much for joining me on the Curious Kid Cast. If you loved this episode, Please share it with a friend and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Keep spreading curiosity. And remember, if you have any questions you'd like answered, visit us on our website at CuriousKidCast.com. Ask away. We love your questions. Keep being curious. Keep asking questions. And I'll see you next time on the Curious KidCast.